Hey, I'm Jake. And I'm Brock. And this is Smart Tech Reviews by Smart Deploy, where we provide unbiased, unsponsored reviews of technology aimed at corporate environments. That's right. If sysadmins manage it, we review it. And today, today's exciting because we're looking at the Logitech MX mechanical keyboard. Yeah, it's about to get clicky today. Very clicky. We're here for Smart Tech Reviews episode four. Thanks for coming back. And today we're going to be reviewing this keyboard, which is another Logitech product. It was only a matter of time before we stumbled onto another Logitech, even though our, our very last review was. Right. I mean, they make a lot of stuff, so we're going to review it. They make a lot of stuff. Also, today is Brock's birthday, and we I wanted to point that out on the show. So happy birthday, Brock. Thanks. He's a good man. We got to celebrate his life and his birth. Brock, what are our initial thoughts here? What are, where do we start? Uh, you know, this is kind of a big deal. One, it's a, it's a, you know, I'll get this out of the way. It's a good product, but it's a big deal because it's kind of one of the first mechanical keyboards that is targeting that, that corporate office space, you know, that, you know, the, the production the you'll find it at, you know, your desk, whatnot. And so this is just, it's, it's going to be a big deal because Logitech is kind of like taking that. I don't know if this is necessarily the first into it, but they're kind of taking the first steps and a lot of people are going to start to follow suit. So I feel like this is going to be a trendsetter and a lot of other companies are going to start producing mechanical keyboards to try to keep up. When you say that it is going to be starting a trend for offices and companies to be using this keyboard, what about the keyboard itself makes it lends itself to being useful in the corporate environment? If you look at the traditional mechanical keyboard, one, you're going to have to put on your sunglasses because you're going to be blinded by the lights. I mean, the colors are out of this world and it's it gets a little old. You know, it's fine in your home, but when you bring this bright, glowing mechanical keyboard to your office space and your, you know, your coworkers are seeing it, it's a They've got like a, a mini rave going on. Yeah, exactly. You can put on the uh, yeah. electronic music and dance to the lights of your keyboard. We've, Which I'm not saying is a bad thing. We've all done it. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. I, I, I have been. I, I have. That is subtle. I guess that's that's leading us into the build quality and the overall presentation of the keyboard. It is subtle. Subtle but sleek, would you say? Right. You know, you look at the pictures of this online. It's kind of got this two-tone matte gray kind of look going to it. And in the pictures, it, it looks good. Uh, but in person, I think it looks a lot better. Um, when I first pulled this out of the box, I was immediately drawn to it and I was like, oh, this is going to look great on my desk, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got that graphite plate underneath the keys that kind of like lifts the keys off of the, uh, primary platform of the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And that gives it like this tactile weight to it. And just, I don't, it's, it feels good to hold. Yeah. Uh, that was the first impression from, from me. But you are dealing with a, a low profile keyboard here. Mm -hmm. So, you know. You're looking at your mechanical keyboards are usually going to have a, a, a bit more raised up, bigger caps on them, and uh, a little bit more travel to them. So this is a low profile. And as such, I think people coming from like laptops, things of that nature are going to feel right at home on this keyboard. Should we test the sound on the mechanical keys? I think so. So that's the question. Uh, that's another thing is if you're, you're next to the, the guy that brought his mechanical keyboard from home and he's got a full symphony going and on these keys and it's just incredibly loud but here I'm just going to do a little typing I don't know it, it's not too loud I mean, it is yeah, satisfyingly he, clicky. he just typed out an entire birthday poem to me and I was fine with it you know it sounded yeah. great you're welcome thanks yeah um you know and it's important to point out so the, this is the linear version this comes in three different options as all mechanical keyboard should. Mm -hmm. um, you have your linear option, which is this guy right here. You have your tactile option, and then you have your clicky option for those of us who like that, you know, typewriter approach. Oh, so you can purchase different levels of click. That's right. And does that change the price range? It doesn't. Logitech has decided to use Kale switches here, and all the, all the configurations are the same as far as the switches go. However, there is a mini version of this that comes without the 10 key that does bring down the price a little bit. 
Well, we'll get back to price in, in a moment. Uh, but first, let's talk about connectivity and battery. So this is a wireless keyboard, right? Straight up, only wireless. That's right. And they, they do it really well, too, because they give you a couple of options. Um, while this does come with a cable, the cable is only used for charging, so that's not going to transfer any of the uh, the data coming from the keyboard. But you do have the option of Bluetooth, and you have the option of the uh, wireless dongle, which is actually what they refer to as their Logi Bolt um, mm -hmm. adapter nowadays, which um, is supposed to be faster and more secure than their other dongles. And honestly, it worked really well, and it has a great range to it. Oh, that's good. Because when we talk about a Logic wireless keyboard, I got to tell you something. So uh, I recently purchased, um, I think I just do my groceries in Walmart, right? I just like order them on the app mm -hmm. and they deliver sure. them. And so I was like, I need a wireless keyboard. So I threw one in my order. It was mm -hmm. a Logitech. It was like 20, 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. For a keyboard of that price, sure, you're not going to expect something like this. Um, however, I at least expected something that would just plug into my computer and work, right? Right. Well, the problem with that keyboard is that very often there was this horrible input lag of I, I would type a word and the uh, the marker would kind of hover. Three seconds later, the word would come out. Wow. And it would happen quite often. And so that experience has made me a little weary of Logitech wireless keyboards. However, again, this is a completely different class uh, than just you know, stop at Walmart and grab yourself. Right. I mean, I can't talk too much to the... the, the but you didn't experience newer. any of that with this keyboard? I didn't. Um, okay. In fact, most of my experience with this keyboard has been great. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a step above the uh, the $20 Logitech keyboard. <laughs> I just had to ask because that experience was infuriated. Oh, I mean, yeah. If I yeah. had that, I would be taking it back to Walmart. Like, the first time I ran into yeah. that issue, it'd be going back. I should have taken it back. Now it's just sitting up. It's too house. late. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you're stuck uh, on it. Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, how about the battery? When, once it's fully charged, how long can we expect to get out of this? Could I take it to the uh, the coffee shop, do a little novel writing? You definitely could. So they claim on the website 15 days, and this is an interesting claim because I've been using this now for probably about two months without charging it. Oh, wow. So they claim about 15 days, and I don't know if they mean like, hey, this is on, and this is just nonstop 15 days of use. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think I'm over two months of using it with the backlight, I think, at its brightest setting. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's still, I think right now before I, uh, we're recording this, I believe it's around 10% battery life left. And you haven't had to charge it once. Haven't had to charge it. So it sounds like battery life's not really going to be an issue. Yeah. No, I mean, you plug it in every couple of months, you're good to go. You'll never have an issue with that. There are a few other features here um, that are worth noting. Uh, one, you have a bunch of function keys that you can configure with a bunch of different preset options that they have in their software. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger keyboard, which we have here, you get more. You get about 23, I believe, function keys. Some of the other options you get, you get smart illumination. So when I said that I'm using it uh, all the time for over a couple of months, this is using smart illumination. Mm -hmm. It means that when your hands come near the keyboard, the keyboard and the backlighting should automatically come on. Ooh. And as your hands leave and you stop using the keyboard after a few seconds, the lighting should turn off. And I've, I've actually had that functionality on a previous Logitech keyboard, and it worked. It was like magic. Yeah. <laughs> it worked amazingly well. Like, I was freaking out the first couple of times I saw it because I'd, like, I'd get my hand close, and it just it would come on. And I'd pull it away, and it would just go off. This one, however, I mean, it's not as accurate, I would say, as the previous model. And I don't know if that has something to do with the... Uh, the form, uh, the software, I'm not sure what, you know, where that hiccup is. And once you start typing, it always comes on, not an issue, and it always goes off a few seconds after you're done using it. But the other one, as soon as my hands were like even coming close to the keyboard, yeah. it was on, it was sensing it. This one, not as much. There are a couple other options too that you can, you know, uh, like a traditional kind of gaming mechanical keyboard where you get like the different lighting options like oh waves or breathing or like mm -hmm. going across the or random keys lighting up you know yeah so those are all there if you want to play with them you totally can i had it on static because i mean it just when i need to see a key i want it to be lit up versus yeah so got it okay so there's customizability but yeah it's not it's fun you know if you're getting bored in the office and you need to play around with something make it your own exactly and then it has its own software yes that's right. So this uses what Logitech calls the Logi Plus options. 
Okay. Nope. Sorry. Logi Options Plus. Logi Options uh, Plus. That's right. Uh, and the software, it works great. Uh, it's super easy to use. They're updating it all the time. Every time I launch the app, I swear there's an update because they're adding more and more devices to use this software. Um, unfortunately, it's also, I mean, it works great. It's super easy to use. Uh, it's also a little bit limiting. You know, if you're used to having like function keys that you can assign macros to and your recording functions and stuff like that, you're not able to do that here. Whereas they have a set of like predefined functions and different apps and stuff that you can assign to the keys. So you can't customize it as much as probably how much you want to, mm -hmm. but they do give you options there. Okay. Let's uh, let's just wrap it up and talk about the pro the main pros and cons of this device. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and come out and say it. This is a sexy device. It's sexy. Sure. It's, it's good looking, and on your desk at work, it's going to be good looking. People are going to come up to you, and they're they're going to start giving you the oh, they're going to be envious. The eyes. You know, you might have to like watch security footage, make sure that nobody's like. Where'd you get that keyboard? Exactly. Yeah. Um. It looks good. It feels good. It feels great. I mean, if you're used to typing on a regular keyboard, you come to something like this, the sound, the feel, it's great. You've got multi-OS support, really long battery life. Really long battery life. And yeah, you can hook this up to a, a Mac. You know, you've got a uh, layout of Mac keys out there on the keyboard, so. Yeah, ergonomically sound, not going to cause you any wrist pain for the most part, right? No, I mean, with that low profile design, you really don't have to till your wrist too much. It's easy to type on for long periods of time. Nice. That's good. That's important. Yeah. Uh, you got the Logitech warranty and customer service. And that's a big one, especially when, you know, we're looking at this from an IT perspective. You want to have a big name brand behind stuff you're buying and plan on supporting for a long time. So you have that Logitech support that you can fall back on and warranty. All right. Let's talk cons. All right. Cons um, is obviously, it's going to be price. We're, we'll talk about more of that in just a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the smart illumination didn't work as well as some of their previous offerings. So, I mean, it, it worked for the most part. You start typing on it, the backlight's going to come on. But if you go to bring your hands up to it, it, it you know, it might not sense it until you're, you're like actually touching the keyboard. Sure. Um, another issue, I did have a couple times where it didn't want to respond to me. So I've left this thing on for the couple months I've been using it. I left it on pretty much the entire time. There was twice that... I came in, I expected to start typing and stuff to happen, and it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it was easy fix, turned it off, turned it back on, it woke back up, everything started working again great. So I thought I would mention that, that did happen twice, but in a period of like two months. All right, also there's no wired option. Uh, if you plug it in, it's for charging only, it's not going to send any data from the keys to the computer. That's right. You got the, you got the wire, so you, you know, you can... You can drain the battery, plug it in, you can still use it, but you either have to be using Bluetooth or the dongle. I mean, I think we just dive into the price, and that's, that's kind of the big one. So for the full-size mechanical keyboard that we have here, mm -hmm. you're looking about $170. And if you're going with the Mini, which ditches the 10 key, you're looking at $150. That's high for a keyboard. There's no way around it. It's expensive, you know, and I can't in good conscience go out there and say like, oh, you, this is a must-have. You have to, it's a keyboard. You know, right. there are tons of great cheap options there for keyboards. Um, is this better than all of those? Yes, I would say it is better than all of those. But is, is it $170 better? No, I mean, it's a keyboard. If you're, you know, if you're supporting someone that's like writing all the time, then yeah. sure, maybe for those type of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, it's a high price point and, and, and it's aimed for people that are, that are going to be buying it for corporate environments, right? Which is why we're reviewing it. And right. so the use case, most likely the, the scenario in which this is going to be purchased is IT managers who are in charge of buying the keyboards for their end users. If they have a use it or lose it budget, if they want it, they have money to spend and they just want to give their end users or their manager or their high ups a nice little, a nice little upgrade. A nice yeah, little if, gift. if you're trying to butter up someone, if you got a performance review coming up and you want to be on their good side, I mean, yeah. this is a good option for it, it's, but yeah, the price considered as well as all the pros, all the cons, all the features, what are we going to give this thing out of 10? You know, if, if price wasn't a consideration, it would either be a nine or a 10 for me with price the way it is though, I'm giving it an eight. All right. So an eight out of 10 for this Logitech MX Mechanical Keyboard here on Smart Tech Reviews. This has been Smart Tech Reviews Episode 4. Thanks so much for sticking with us and watching. Uh, happy birthday to Brock. Also, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel right here. Cue the Zeus.
Also, if there's any piece of technology that you would like us to review for your corporate environment, leave it down in the comments and we will for sure consider that. Yeah, I think that about does it. So we'll see you next time for the fifth episode of Smart Tech Reviews. Thanks, everybody. See you guys.